In this video, we're going to take a look at the iOS V Layer 2 Switch Virtual Machine. In the topology that you can see here, we've got a very simple layout with a set of Linux machines at the top connected to an unmanaged switch, so that's just a regular uh, process level Layer 2 switch, and then a series of iOS V Virtual Machines, and three iOS V L2 switches set up in the middle. And those are set up with what will be trunking links in between, and at the edges, those iOS V instances are set up with access links. In the middle there, we're also set up with parallel links, so we'll take a look at those in more detail in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, VLANs on the interfaces. So we want to get our automated configuration working. So we're setting a VLAN tag. So here you can see we're setting the property VLAN 10. On this router, we're setting a property VLAN 20. And same 10 attached to the interface. And again, 20. So obviously those devices set in VLAN 10 will be able to see each other, those set in VLAN 20 will be able to see each other. Now up here, the iOS V1 uh, instance has got two links, so parallel links connecting down to the switch, one in VLAN 10 and one in VLAN 20 as we can see. So with our basic properties set, we can now go and ask for, uh, the auto netkit function to build our configurations and then we can take a look at those. The initial diagram that we see here from Auto Netkit is giving us our physical view, but if we pick from the pick list VTP, we're then able to see a view which is just showing the domain view insofar as the Layer 2 switch instances are concerned. If we take a look at the Layer 2 view itself, here we're seeing the broadcast domains, so one for VLAN 10, one for VLAN 20, and also the unmanaged switch there at the top. And by pointing to the various elements on the diagram, we're able to get more information. So again, we're able to see those devices that are resident within those particular domains. You know, we gray out the devices that aren't part of those domains. Now we're taking a look at the IGP, and you'll notice that the switches have disappeared because those switches are not part of the OSPF areas. They're not an element that's actually running OSPF, so those are now removed from the diagram. I've now spun up my simulation so we can see all the nodes there uh, now in active state. And we're going to log in and we're going to start to take a look around and do some reconfiguration work. So I'm attaching in via SSH, logging into the router. And we can see the routing table with the entries, the loopback IP addresses present there. We can see the running configuration. So this is the configuration built by Auto Netkit that's been automatically injected into those virtual machines. So we can see the IP addresses associated there, one on each of those interfaces. What we're gonna do now, we're actually gonna reconfigure those parallel interfaces and actually turn one into a trunk. So I'm shutting down uh, interface gigabit ethernet zero slash two, removing the IP address, removing the IP address on zero slash three, and now I'm going to reconfigure this to use sub-interfaces. So we're setting up that first sub-interface for the VLAN 10, reapplying the IP address that we had there before, and also enabling OSPF on that interface. Next, we're setting up the sub-interface for VLAN 20, Again, applying the IP address that was already set up for us. And enabling OSPF once more. Okay, so we're done on that side. We've now created a trunk interface with two sub-interfaces on it. But in so doing, our OSPF neighbors have come down. So we're now going to reconfigure the iOS v L2 switch to enable trunking to be presented to the iOS v-1 router. So again, we're logging in. I can see the configuration, again, created by Auto Netkit, done automatically for us. And there we can see it applied. So there's that VLAN 10 and that VLAN 20 interface. But of course, now we need to reconfigure that into a trunk. So here we go. 
So we're going into the interface, we're removing the switch port configuration that has it currently in access mode. And now we're turning it on for trunking. So setting the encapsulation and then actually turning that port into trunking mode. That's now done. We can see the new configuration. There it is. So that now has been applied. If we look a bit further down, there it is. Giggy 1.0. And if we now look at the interface trunk states, we can now see it's enabled on gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0. So we can see that we're meant to be carrying VLANs 1, 10, and 20. But it takes a bit of time before you actually see activity, and there it is, it's now active on that interface. You now can see in the routing table that the loopback IP addresses have reappeared since OSPF has now come back up. And there we can see the OSPF neighbor states, so we can see devices in DR and BDR because we're all operating in a multipoint environment. So now I'm going to send some traffic from one of the Linux servers up there on the top left to the iOS v5 router on the bottom right. So we're logging into the Linux server and I'm going to send some ping traffic. You can see the route entries and now we're going to send that ping traffic down to the loopback IP address of iOS v5. I'm going to use the live visualization function to gather data from the simulation itself. So we're starting that up. There we have the view, so let's just resize that, move that up a bit. And we'll start off with our physical view. But we want to take a look at what's actually happening with the routing protocols that are now running inside our network. So we turn on OSPF Live, and then we ask it to gather that data. So it's now going to gather the OSPF session information, and we can see the communication paths that are taking place, so the sessions between the various routers. Now to take a look at the iBGP, since that's also operational. So collect the BGP data. And again, we see the individual relationships being plotted on our diagram.